as I'm going to get straight into this, no messing around. Um, this will cover two channels because they're not related, but it's about paint. So it's either prop it up because you're into modelling and stuff, or you're on the uh, dirty garage guy and you blah 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 blah. Uh, I said I'd do this video quite a while back um, for one channel and the other channel it might as well just be on there anyway. What I'm going to do is talk quickly, briefly and give you some examples of spray paints. Now I've got to be very very clear because I'm going to be singing the praises of you Paul. Um, but I am not affiliated, they haven't sent me, well I, I dug this out, this is an invoice for these that arrived today. Uh, it's just a, it, they arrived today and I thought oh, I'll just do that video. So this is an invoice. There's nothing on here, is there? This is from Marlowe Paint Supplies, just the cheapest one I can find on YouTube, um, eBay. Uh, Twelve cans, uh, five hundred milliliters of matte black, uh, fifty quid. Right. So that's how much it costs. That's including your VAT. So forty-eight quid. What divided by 12? What's that? Oh god, what is that? £3.80 or something? Just so we're on the same page, very, very quickly. Uh, £48 divided by 12 is 4 quid. 4 quid? Oh, look at what I was going to say. £48.95 divided by 12 is £4.07. and seven pence. 8 pence rounded up. So, no, not, not £3.80 a div. Um, <laughs> any road. So, yeah, so that's my money spent. All right, that's what I got invoiced, and then blah, 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 blah. Um, and you could probably pause that and find out where I live. Go for it, knock yourself out. I, I will expect to see you break into my house presently. So, <laughs> um, so what I've got here is, this is you, Paul. This is grey primer, right? These are the power cans, uh, 500 millilitres, and they're not joking. You, you seem to get every single drop out of them. There's an awful lot of propellant in there. Um, so I've had that quite a while. This is the matte black. There's gloss black. Um, I've got clear. This is a kind of clear coat. This is which one's older actually? Yeah. So as you can see, I've had these for a long time because this is where well, it's everything's different. The labels are different. This dial is bigger with a different shadow on it, and it's a different blue. So they've changed over time. And as you can see, what it says on the side of it has moved. Everything's changed and moved. So these are the newer cans. This is the older can. Um, and I've got, I think, all the ones in between as well. I didn't bother going looking. So I've got one a bit older than that, which is it's all in black. Um, any road. So this is also a can of spray paint I picked up at my local pound shop. Whatever, you know, them usual places. Um... For a, I think it's like a pound, obviously, kind of thing. So yeah, I've got etch primer, clear coat. I think that's getting on empty. I've got some another box full of clear coats. So there's just no point getting it all out. I buy them in boxes because they turn out to be quite cheap. If you go to your local hardware store, B&Q, stuff like that, in this country, in the UK, a can this size, just say it's, what's it called, Valspar, um, plastic coat, they're all shit, right? Excuse my French, but they're all shit. Um, and they're all shit compared to what I'm going to show you. I've also got... So these are just... Uh, this was a paint colour I, I had made up. Um, you know, just basically a car code, paint code. Um, it's just custom-filled, non-disclosed cans. When you buy these, like this one, whatever this one is, this is... This is just a sticker put over a lacquer. Uh, when you buy stuff for cars, you usually get this kit, you know what I mean? Like that. So they're quite expensive usually because they're coded. <coughs> but um, there's also these I use, which are the Simone's thing, which I'm doing some tests on at the moment. They were basically at hand. I generally don't use these. It's just that these are bacon paints. So if we're talking modeling, we need to forget these. Um, I'm soon going to be Probably never using these ever again because I've got Cerakote and powder coating. That's a totally different... <laughs> so we'll forget these. But people do use these for engines and stuff like that. If you do, 
I've done some tests recently and some more that people on this channel haven't seen, um, which is you have to bake them, right? You have to bake them. Otherwise, their properties are terrible compared to when they are baked. So, it, yeah, just go over there. So that's them ones. So there's two paints that I want to point out in general. So we've got this, so we'll put that to one side because that's the crap example. All these u pull ones we'll put to one side. Um, so I'll, I'll, we'll talk about u pull first. We'll forget these two in, out in the, the back of the Ulu. We'll turn them around. People probably know what they are, but we'll forget them. So we'll talk about the u pull, right? This stuff. Um, get, the open, get the open can out. Um, the cans, you really do get every last drop out of them. They, as long as they're at a decent temperature, so if you don't, if it's cold, and what I'm saying is not just outside temperature, if the can itself is like cold, right? Fill up a washing up bowl or a bucket or anything with some just lukewarm warm water, right? As hot as you'd wash the dishes in, but no hotter kind of thing, right? And dunk these in them, you know, you only need it a bit, you know, only up to a couple of inches up. And then just leave them in it for 10, 20 minutes before you come to spray. If you do that, and you do that with any spray paint, then you are not going to get all the sputters and spitting and stuff like that. Right? It's going to flow a lot less. The solvents want to evaporate a lot easier because the you know there's heat, energy, it's energy basically, and the paint is a lot you know it's thinner, right? It's not as viscous. So that helps you out. So that is a rule no matter what you use, right? Don't use a kettle. Don't boil the water because these are pressurised containers and I don't know if you've got a defective one or a crap one or something like that. There is a ch chance that you might explode one. Right? Don't do that. Just like I say, hands you can quite easily keep your Water you can quite easily and comfortably keep your hands in. Then you can put these cans in. Only up a bit. You don't want to go don't, don't submerge the entire thing because it'll float and then it'll fall over and you'll get wet nozzles and all sorts and then it's a mess. So that's that. Um, the solvents solvents is pretty much where it's at. There's, it's very difficult, and we don't, generally speaking, as the public, ever test the paint. Right? We don't ever road test paints, um, you know, and even professional spa uh, paint sprays and stuff. They'll change their brands over the years, and the, the formula will change without them probably even knowing half the time. The fact of the matter is, is that. Um, it's how the paint goes on. That's what we're comparing now. How good the paint is. I'll put my bottom dollar on that these u poles as a paint are just as good as any anyone else. I don't think they're deficient. So what it's about is it's about the solvent mix. Right? It's about the paint itself to a degree, how well it atomizes, stuff like that. But it's also the solvent mix. And there are cheap solvents and there are expensive solvents. And there are cheap propellants and more expensive ones. The u pole ones have the more expensive ones, so you are going. That's what gives you a better, call it a painting experience, right? Um, and I'm going to show you what that is. So there's a few things we have to consider. Number one is how well it lays down. So how well it is to spray with it, um, how quick it dries, right? That really does make a difference. And what the actual paint coverage is like, right? So with the u pole stuff, right? You've always people got this. I can hear it, right? It's not enough. I haven't dunked these in water, by the way, because it is 15 degrees. It's not that cold. So I have my bits that some people might see on my channel, and got a bit of cardboard. I'm literally just going to show you how it goes on, right? That's all. All this, this is all this demonstration is about is just how it sprays on. Like I say, I have no affiliation with you, Paul. If they want to sponsor me, please do, because I buy all your shit anyway. So, <laughs> like filler and stuff, so get on with it. Uh, I'm not going to use the mask after I finish this video. I'll put the extraction on. I'm only going to give it a quick spray. I always find as well that if you do this, that's better than doing this. Any road. So, what we're looking for is... There's that 
lovely fan and the, there's an awful lot of solvent you can see it puff around but there's not much paint and if you look at my paint it's very much where I'm spraying it actually I'm gonna choke to death in here so what I'll do is I will quickly put the extractor on right then you probably can't hear me <laughs> but it's fine all I need you to do is see what's going on Right, now the hurricane stopped. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus. So that is pretty much dry. It's, it's almost there. But it is literally, well, I can show you in real time. We get this corner here. Just like that. And we'll watch paint dry. I will literally watch paint dry and there you can see it drying you can see it flashing off now primer usually dries quite quick um, there you can see it just flashing off so it's the quality of the solvents and how lovely this stuff sprays on and this is all there's a bit there tiny bit thick there and that's, I haven't even, it hasn't even come off my finger. It's just kind of smeared the, the surface texture a bit. None of this has been prepped properly, by the way. I'm just literally doing the demo. So there you can see, there you see, it's, it's still not perfectly dry, but around there it is, where it's gone on thicker. But there, you see, that was the thickest section. All right, that's dry. It dries so quick. Right, so that's that. Um, have I got something else? Oh yes, so I can use the inside because um, I wanted to do this anyway. So it, the U-Pole stuff comes, that's the primer and you get an etch primer and a grey primer. I can't remember if they do a white one but they might do. Um, and the paints, these paints, they do basically black and white. Unfortunately they do just black and white so it's a white and it's a matte black, they do a satin black, which is absolutely brilliant, is the satin, and a gloss black. Um, so, old Dell Boy will be well chucked, you should get some. So, same with this stuff, we're spraying something that's yellow. And I'm picking it up by the bit that I painted. Um, same kind of deal. And what it is, is it lays it on, I'll give you one spray, it lays it on quite, you know, without being colourist, gingerly. That really helps you not lay on too much. And you see the coverage, it's really good. Like, really good. And... Yeah, the amount you get out of a can is, is compared to some of these ones, some of these shit ones. Um, if people are interested, we will do some comparisons between that and the crapper paints. I'll literally go out and buy a few examples of crap paints and we can just literally look at, um, you know, coverage and, and all that kind of stuff and how well it goes on and, and all that kind of jazz. But um, again, it's flashing off, I've, you know, I've, I've, well, give it a minute, I'll chat away. So that's that. Um, unfortunately, as far as I can tell, these power cans, they only come, like I say, in black and white, unfortunately. But, um, you know, you probably don't want to spray in black and white and stuff. And in a sense, this is where I want my audience to help me a bit. There is, um, you know, you can always just go and get Cerakotes and stuff for bike stuff and blah, 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 and powder coating. Some things, you just need spread. It could be so, stuff like this, you see, you know, nothing to do with bikes. It, it, paint is paint. Depends what you need to paint. So the other paint brand, 
is, and it's the absolute balls, is Krylon. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is the camouflage series. It's got flat blacks. There's a tan. There's a like a, a tan color. I've got that as well. They do a black. They do the camouflage stuff. You know what I mean? Um, but Krylon also do the best clear coat that I've ever seen come out of a spray can. Uh, that stuff is beautiful. Um, I also had a, a, a pumpkin orange that was absolutely fantastic. So Krylon seems to be only really available in America as far as we're concerned in the UK. This stuff is pretty cheap because obviously someone's importing a hell of a lot of it for... You know, the old air soft nerfy kind of guys who I say nerf, this is a nerf thing, but the guys who, you know, mess around with stuff like that and preppers and all this nonsense. Like it says this is all for hunting gear, metal plastics, blah blah blah. This stuff is absolutely fantastic. Um again, flashes off great. You can tell by the smell. This reminds me of paints my dad used to get when I was a kid. It's not like normal paints anymore. It's obviously, you know, panda killing solvents. It comes with a funky nozzle. Now this stuff, it doesn't like to be sprayed really upside down unless you get it going. It really does like to be warm. But this stuff is completely different to the U-Pol stuff. This stuff goes on thick and it goes on quick. But it's kind of got a point and shoot nozzle where it's a lot more. But you look how thick that goes on. Right, it's already, it's, it's pulling up and running. I'm just going, blah. That's, that. That's literally the quickest I can fire it. So you have to do this at a distance and you have to be, you know, it's like this. And look at that coverage, that's insane. You know, that is, you really have to do this from a distance and the coverage is fantastic. Um, and it's called ultra flat, it really is. <laughs> um, but you know, this, you've really got to kind of be quick and dust it on like that. Now, you can get nearly every colour under the sun in Krylon. It doesn't have to be flat blacks, they've got glosses, they've got all the rest of it, like most paint sprayers. <coughs> oh god, that smells good, but it goes to the back of your throat. Um, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. And the only problem is, is I, you can't seem to get the colours in this country. You can import them, but my god, they cost a fortune, like 20 quid a can, basically which is ridiculous. When you buy this, it's like 10 quid a can because, like I say, someone's importing a shed load of them. Um, but this stuff, again, it flashes off like crazy. It is a, it just really good colour, right? Really good coverage, really good colour. Like, as usual with any kind of paints, you know, I usually leave them over 24 hours. But when after 24 hours, this stuff is, just like the U-Pol, it's absolutely golden. Um... This nozzle, it's very accurate, it's very black. Uh, I do I do love that because you can get into nooks and crannies, so you'd basically go around all inside here first on your first go, even trying it from the other side. But it'd be a, a dusting and just build it up very slowly because, my God, this is the quickest paint in the world to um, put, you know, go too thick with. It is insane. But it is lovely stuff and uh, it cures really fast. And the colours are brilliant. Like I said, I had the pumpkin orange. And it was a gloss. And my God, was that vibrant. It was just absolutely fantastic. And really quite tough. Uh, it seemed tough. I cleared over the top of it. But um, even cutting it back with some paper where it had gone a bit, I'd gone a bit thick. It had gone a bit, or, you know, it had a bit of a texture to it. Um, absolutely fantastic stuff. So, my recommendation. And this is the thing, right? Loads of people will give you loads of recommendations on what they've found best, blah, blah, blah. Ignore them, right? I will take the Pepsi Challenge, the Pepsi Max Challenge, on Krylon and Upol against any other paint. Right? If you know someone who thinks... If you know someone who... You know that there's tried this, and then they still reckon they've got a better paint, I want to know what that paint is. I don't want recommendations for paints. I want... People who have tried this and are confident enough to say it's better. Um, and then I'll try it. But it, it's not just, well, I use this and I've had no problems. Don't care. Don't care. Your paint is shit. Right? <laughs> All joking aside, honestly, it is a bit more expensive. But 
when you're painting your stuff, all that time, all that effort, all the rest of it, why would you bother? You know, on my other channel, guys who are on the property won't probably know, but on the other channel, we have a joke and a laugh about tough black. Um, I'll take the Pepsi challenge on that with this stuff easily, easily. Um, it's just the Upol stuff is absolutely fantastic, and the Krylon. The downside to the Krylon is I just in America I know people could just go to Walmart or wherever, Kmart or wherever, and they could just go and pick it up, and and unfortunately, probably because of the EU, we just can't. You know, it's just it, we can you can get it, but you have to import it, and it costs a bloody fortune, um, which is such a shame because it is fantastic stuff. And I've been using this stuff for years and years and years, and no one's died yet, so. Uh, it's a lie. <laughs> Any road. I hope that makes sense. I hope that's useful to someone. Um, and I will see you next time. Or in a bit.